We're having unseasonably cold weather. It's May and there's a frost advisory this morning. So couple that with a, a full moon, which happens to be a super moon. And uh, we were already a couple weeks behind this spring. We actually had a spring this year. When you go from year to year, that's why it's good to keep a journal because if you base everything off the prior year, it could have been unseasonably warm last year and everything could have been two weeks ahead. Well, if you have a spring the next year and it's unseasonably cool, then you could be like a month behind what you were the year prior as far as water temps and everything. But up here in Tennessee, these stripers are making their spring run. And a lot of times, if you hit it right, you know, the the seasonal pattern is going to override weather a lot of times. We're going to do a little tail race fishing. If that doesn't pan out, we're going to shoot down the river a few miles and pull some baits. If the stripers aren't biting, we'll, we'll go target some catfish. All right, so what we're going to do here, you got a couple different ways you can do this. We're going to get up on the bulls. We're just going to drift back. Uh, you can take a split shot, kind of let your bait drift along, or you can take about a three quarter ounce sinker, just let it straight down to the bottom. You just want to barely feel it bump the gravel. And uh, you get up in here where these turbines are, all that swift current, it makes seams. And them, them striper, they like to lay in them seams. Uh, we're going to try to get our bait down there to them and snap one off. We're going to the grocery store, Walmart. Oh, no. Wally World. We're gonna get some steaks. We got us a little grill, a little gas grill. Lacey's cooking us up some onions. We're gonna get up. Hey, I'm gonna go We're gonna go down. fishing. I'm gonna go on down and get some ice and then I'm gonna come back up. That's a striper. There's a good one. Oh yeah. Gotta get him to the boat. There you go. That's bad a little bit. That's better than more. Ah yeah! What's the motor? What's the motor? Get you some of that. Just give it a good cast. Try to keep your line up out of the water because if your line gets in the water, it's gonna kick your bait back. So try to keep your line up out of the water and just let the weight pull against the rod. Take us over to that third one. You ain't gotta get us real close. Slow her down. All right, watch that sign. As soon as we start to move backwards. Wait till we start moving backwards that way our bait don't outrun us. Give her a little cast, and hold on tight. I'm using a 3 8 ounce weight. He's using a two ounce. He can feel the bottom a lot better than I can. For the most part, I can't feel the bottom until we get back here, it starts to climb up, and then I can actually start bumping the bottom. Some guys will use split shot. Some guys use two ounces and everything in between. As drifting back, that bait's just going all in them waves right there. And in between those turbines, those boils, you got what they call a seam. It's almost like a little eddy. You get it up in the seam, it's gonna kick your bait around. It's kind of more prone to stay up into the, the washing machine. You throw it right on top of a boil, it's probably just gonna get kicked out immediately. I feel it bumping the bottom now. If you got a two ounce sinker, what you'll do, as soon as you drop it down, you, you hoping the fish is underneath the boat up there at them turbines. It, all a two ounce sinker does is just get you down a whole lot faster. As soon as you get to the turbines and them fishes in that swift moving water, they'll, they'll grab it. You hit the rocks like that, and if it feels like a fish, you're more likely to just lost your bait. Small tail ray striper. Nope, I still got him. We're going to make a long drift here, so I'm going to cast her back out. All right, we'll just, we'll make us a long drift. Them fish might be a little further back. You can watch it, that rod tip right there just tick. That's when you know you're in the right place. That's, that's going to be the strike zone. 
Sometimes it's kind of hard to tell the difference between a fish strike and them rocks, eh? Them rocks will grab that weight pretty good. That's why a lot of people use circle hooks. That way all they gotta do is reel. Yes, sir. Oh, man. Oh, man, that's a good catfish. Yeah. What you got there, Lacey? Oh, catfish. Tennessee River Cat. Decent Tennessee River Cat, Arkansas. <laughs> we got fish everywhere. Oh yeah. example of a, a good tail race fish. This is a good fish for a tail race. I'll tell you what man, on light tackle these things really put up a fight. Get you some of that baby. Yes. bubbles. The water coming out of the tail race is extremely oxygenated but the amount of dissolved oxygen could be less than water a couple of miles down river. guys on the bank throwing giant treble hooks with like four to six ounce bank sinkers trying to snag whatever they can snag and they hit Alan's boat a few minutes ago we're gonna let them get by with one okay yeah. yes sir okay <laughs> 